Boss God 1 was launched on October 12, 1964 at 7.30am UTC from Gagarin's start at Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was the first ever attempt to launch more than one astronaut or cosmonaut on a mission to space, and it in fact sent three cosmonauts, pilot Vladimir Komarov, engineer Konstantin Feoktistov, and Dr. Boris Yegorov. Aware of American progress on the Gemini program, the Soviet Union hastened to beat the Americans, but didn't have an equivalent of a Gemini spacecraft ready to do so. Instead of waiting on the development of a new spacecraft, the Soyuz, they adapted Vostok by stripping out the ejection seat and adding a landing retro rocket to slow descent because the crew would not be able to eject out as all the Vostok cosmonauts had done. Engineer Konstantin Feoktistov himself was part of the team responsible for adapting Vostok and decided also that the crew could not be in pressure suits, there simply wasn't any space. In fact, the crew had to lose weight just to fit into the space originally meant for one person. Initially, Feoktistov was not on the crew for Voskhod 1, but for political reasons, Boris Volonov and Georgi Katis were removed from their place three days before the original launch date, and Sergei Korolev decided it would be good to have the engineer ride on the flight. That crew shakeup and the fact that the crew could do little to nothing useful in space, cramped as they were, and were therefore given as little training as any space crew would ever get, led Vasily Mission, Korolev's second-in-command, to declare it a circus act. But that's an injustice to circus acts, at least the ones with nets. You see, there was no launch escape system, so in the case of a failure prior to fairing separation, the crew would be doomed. The crew would also die if the life support system failed or if there was depressurization because of the lack of pressure suits. The mission was limited to one day to avoid problems with life support and also had a backup retro package on the nodes. On Vostok, the launches were supposed to be to a low enough orbit that the spacecraft would return in 10 days even if the main retro rocket failed, though Vostok 1 ended up in too high an orbit. Voskhod rode on a somewhat more powerful launcher and got placed in a higher orbit which would not allow a 10-day return. Even with a 10-day return though, the probability that the life support in the tiny capsule could handle three people for that length of time was dubious. So the backup retro package ensured that there would be return at the end of the one-day mission. This mission began a trend toward unacceptable risks in the Soviet space program and its desperation to keep pace with the United States despite inadequate funding, mirrored by the tragic overconfidence on the American side that would lead to Apollo 1. For the Soviets, this phase would ultimately lead to such a blatantly unsafe craft, Soyuz 1, that sole pilot, Vladimir Komarov, the pilot from this mission, chose to accept the mission primarily to save his backup, Yuri Gagarin, from death. As he fully expected, Soyuz 1 did lead to Vladimir Komarov's death. On this mission though, he returned safely as did Feoktistov and Yegorov after the one-day mission, paving the way for Voskhod 2, the first DBA. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Voskhod 1.